Let's head up to Escadilla Mountain. See how that is. Testing. Mm. System ready. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. Alrighty, <clears throat> at the trailhead, Escadia Mountain. Oh, it's about uh, 7 a.m. So it'll probably take me about an hour and a half to get up there, I'm not sure. Uh, I can't remember how far it is, but uh, anyway, it's just uh, quiet, peaceful, about 7 a.m. A lot warmer than I expected. Um, I may be shedding a layer here, but I can always add one too. I got another one in the pack, a couple more, so. Let's get cracking. First day at altitude. We're at 9,700 right now, and we're going to go up to almost 11,000. So I came up from sea level yesterday, and uh, oh, woke up early this morning, couldn't wait to get on the trail. Oh, it's beautiful up here. A lot more fallen trees than I remember. Ah. We did have a fire up here, so unfortunately the top is burned out, but and it makes it hard because um, having to climb over some of this stuff is pretty big. This is a really part, pretty part of the trail. A lot more fallen trees than I remember. Ah. We did have a fire up here, so unfortunately the top is burned out, but and it makes it hard because um, having to climb over some of this stuff is pretty big. This is a really part pretty part of the trail. There is something that I look at now. When I climb over logs, because how much stuff is sticking out from them? If I slip, come down on one, I don't want to impale myself on a branch like I did last year, because that was so much fun. Not. This thing is just lined with um, aspen. Makes the trail quite pleasurable. They're growing like crazy. 
course this is awesome we're uh just passing 10,200 feet climbing up here we're gonna go through that beautiful saddle up there and then our our peak is on the other side of that so breaking out <sighs> uh, this is gonna be beautiful this summer a little, little dry now but uh it's uh may may uh who 16 so haven't been at this altitude in a while so let's get her done that's where i came from that's where i'm going first i gotta get up to that ridge and unfortunately lose some altitude going down that and then back up so ooh, first day at altitude but not doing too bad actually feeling good about it boy not a doggone cloud in the sky um, and I definitely don't need an extra layer now a slight breeze coming from the west I believe southwest so, yeah, and then some pretty aspen in front, drinking up the sunlight. Oh. Okay, we're not quite on that ridge, we're kind of going around the back side of it that you saw earlier. Um, it peaks out at 10,500. Um, I believe our summit's at 10-9, at, uh, so, um, nature's going to be cruel in a way and send us down before we climb back up. So, I'll probably have another 500 feet to climb back up to get to our summit this morning. You can hear the woodpeckers a mile away up here. It's just unbelievable. Um... up on an area that got burned pretty bad many years ago some uh, campers left their campfire went out hiking came back there was a fire and they just left so it burned it's the largest forest fire in Arizona history and when I first saw news of it I thought ah it's not going to be a problem. It's 30 miles away. Well, with 70 mile an hour winds, that pretty much gets taken care of. It's not even defensible. I mean, some areas that I thought were some nice valleys between us and the fire, it would just blow right over. Uh, normally, it would stop right there and you could defend it, shut it down, but no, no doing. Fortunately, my uh, little community where my house is, is went all around, around it and that was pretty much still pristine. Very pretty up there. So anyway, that's why you're looking at what you're looking at. Just a small advertisement. Um, I made a video series called uh, Soda 360. If you're interested in learning what this thing is um, and why to do it, um, Tune into that. It's a series. Just click on my channel. You'll see a series called Soda 360. Part one is explains what the heck it is, why you would want to do it. Uh, part two is planning for the activation. So all the prep that I do, uh, including charting, equipment loadout, etc., is in that one. Episode three is an actual reference activation, just to show you. Um, you know, it's uh, navigate, uh, move, and communicate. So, and then get back down. So, and then the last part is just a kind of a wrap up. Uh, if you do want to get your points, uh, how I log them. 
So I have a couple apps that I use and to do all that stuff. So if you are a chaser, that is, you're really not up for hiking or there aren't any mountains around you, how the heck do you chase? Activators like myself that are on a summit somewhere with your radio. So that episode goes uh, completely into chasing. I have a separate one on just navigation, uh, which I hope you enjoy. And it's mainly about charting and how I prepare and how I use some tools to do that. Um, maybe in the future, uh, I should do a video on safety. I wrote an article on that at hamninja.com slash safety. That pretty much covers everything I would do in the video. So uh, take a look at that. I've had some search and rescue people look at it. Make sure I'm not completely full of shit. So check out hamninja.com for the rest of my blog and accompanying articles. Uh, I can make out the, the tower up there through the trees. So lookout tower about 400 feet above us so we're gonna head down here what you're looking at here is just a fallen branch with some nice things sticking out of it large and small extremely sharp if you were to fall i'm here to tell you um that'll go right up into your leg um and give you a nice uh, puncture wound which uh I'm also here to tell you it hurts like hell. <laughs> so, what do you do? Well, if you're by yourself, you pat yourself up and go. If you're not by yourself, maybe ask someone else to do it. But you got to be prepared to do shit like that. Because a simple slip and fall will do it. The other thing I've learned is when I'm going over a log or through an area, be very mindful of where that stuff is. So if I do have an accident, it's just a bruised bum. Oof. This big stuff's kind of a pain in the ass to climb over. Sometimes I go around it. Just found another use for hiking poles. All this fallen stuff is really slowing my progress. Either having to go up, under, or around it. There's a lookout tower. Just about, uh, well, we're on that peak. We're 10,000, a little over 10,800. Uh, I'm going to swing over there. That's where the activation zone is. Um, actually, it looks lower than this, but uh, uh, I'll give you a reading over there. The charts show it about 100 feet higher, so uh, let's go check it out. We are at, starting to climb back up out of this small saddle uh, between these two peaks. Um, probably in the activation zone now. This is a field of Ravalock. Rava lock. A field of lava rock. Whew. The air is thin up here. First day at uh, altitude, we're going to be up about 10,900 plus. Um, but uh, we're probably at about 10,850 right now. Um, and I've made it through, I think, the worst part back there, mainly because. I'm able to either step over or go around a lot of these fallen logs. Um, it really, I had forgotten how much stuff has fallen down here, but a lot more has fallen since I've been up here. So it makes it a real bugger and you have to be very careful uh, that you don't slip and fall on some of this shit because it's it's got some very sharp punji sticks coming out of it. So, I already tried that once in New Mexico, and I really don't want to have to go through that again, especially up here when it's such a, a 
bitch to get back to the place where you don't have as much of this. Ah, so I'm just kind of picking myself around, picking my way around it, being careful, but it is very slow going. Uh, a lot more of this stuff is falling, but you know. We're getting there. Um, man, really slows you down. Uh, let's give you a little 90 degree swing here. And uh, right behind me is the uh, lookout tower. So we're just traversing here, starting back up the hill. Uh, let's get back to work. All right, just thought I'd point out, this is kind of interesting. And you'll see on the chart that I'll post, and you can look at my track because it's a little bit zigzaggy, but I'm right on the ridge. And what's interesting is, I mean, I'm on the knife edge ridge, if you will. I mean, it's not knife edge in that it has any danger whatsoever, but it's interesting. They got a nice drop off, a little bit steeper that way. I mean, it, it, you can walk down and hike, but right down this way. So just a hike. You can see how much more uh, fallen timbers right there. Um, I might, I think I might have found a better way on the way back. We've got about 150 yards to go to the, looks probably the benchmark up there. We're going to get some really nice views today. Uh, a little tiny clouds forming out there on the rim. Um, no rain forecast. Um, no, no, <laughs> more importantly, no uh, thunderstorms. So, which we do get in the summer. Uh, starting with the monsoons in July, we get those every afternoon. So that means soda has to be done by 12 um, for safety reasons. I, mean, I don't enjoy getting wet, but it's uh, kind of the lightning that starts snapping down when you're, um, you have a bunch of wire in the air. So anyway. Let's get up to the summit there. It's going to be really slow going. Probably another, geez, 20 minutes up there. Just kind of picking my way through, depending on the how much more fallen stuff I have to get over. And again, you know, I'm just picking my way through it to be very careful. Anyway. Whew, boy, getting some great views off here. Mountains in the far distance. It's clear in a million miles. And it's uh, warm. I'm going to have to put some... Take a layer off and uh, put some sunscreen on. We're at the summit. We, I mean me. Clouds starting to form over there. Kind of pretty. Pretty little view here. Trees obscure a lot of the view, uh, which you get off the other summit. I've been over there by that. Uh, uh, lookout tower. Swear to God, we don't look any higher than that, but whatever. Um, it took me probably an hour longer just because all the picking of routes, carefully going over stuff, lava rock, uh, which is a lot easier, but just um, kind of zigzagging around so I didn't have to climb over stuff too high. It's a lot more work too, obviously, but um, very rewarding little climb here so I'm gonna set up my gear and we're gonna send some cool waves up into the atmosphere birds are really going up here I think maybe I'll set up right over there it's a little bit higher I'll get a little bit better propagation to the east um, so let's do that CQ, 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 this is November 1, Charlie Lima Charlie calling CQ, CQ, CQ at Whiskey 7 Alpha, Alpha Echo 006. Summit's on the air.
Okay, I got an Alpha Bravo station in there. Alpha Bravo, go again. Alpha Bravo 4, Papa Papa. Alpha Bravo 4, Papa Papa. Alpha Bravo 4, Papa Papa. I got you 5555. QSL, QSL, thank you very much. 73. Alrighty, 73, man, have a great day. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie, QRZ. Hey, Lima, 7, Tango, K7GT, calling you, K7GT, how's it going, man? Hey, this is K7GT, Kilo 7, Golf Tango, did you hear my call? Ah, QSL, QSL, Kilo 7, Golf Tango, got you a 5-9, actually, 5-9. Roger, Roger. Well, thanks for the five six, man. I appreciate it. Have an awesome day. I was looking for you on CW, but I didn't find you. Thanks for the contact. Alrighty, man. Thank you. Whiskey eight, Alpha, Papa Sugar. Whiskey eight, pa um, <laughs> Whiskey eight, Alpha, Papa Sugar, QSL. Okay, is that November 6th, Delta November, Mike? Uh, I got you. I got you at about a, uh, I don't know, about a 5-3, five, 5-3, three, five, three, over. QSL, QSL, yeah, the band is up and down today. It's definitely up and down. Thanks for the contact, man, and have an awesome day. 73, this is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie calling CQ, CQ, CQ for summits on the air, any station, anywhere. Okay. Um, I'm sitting up on Escadia Mountain. Just packed up and um, getting ready to head down. I eat my sandwich and then go over to um, 
South Mountain. Is that up? That's a drive up. But I got about a three, three and a half plus hike back through this crap. So it's going to be a while. Um, here's the bonus. I was able to work a station in Belgium. That's first for me. I kept asking him his call sign because it didn't make any sense to me. And I recorded it. It's like, really? A friend of mine in, in California just worked him as well from another summit. So good propagation into Belgium today. Um, he must have an awesome station too because to be able to pull us out. But uh, he was kind of up and down. But uh, that was pretty cool. So I'm going to finish my sandwich here and get some energy back up and uh, head over to South Mountain. So there you have it. I was going to watch my son's graduation. I've got I've got internet up here, but it looks like just one big slideshow and then it ended. So um, my son warned me it was going to be well, kind of lame. So he uploaded a picture, most likely one of the ones that I took. And uh, his real celebration was that day, I tell you. He had such a good time uh, taking pictures. I'll put a link to it on the in the photos. Of the, uh, he and his roommates, and they just had a ball. So uh, anyway, that's a report from top of Vescadia Mountain. Pretty awesome. Okay. So coming back, I found that if I stayed in this lava rock field, there's less trees over here falling, less trees in general. So it's actually easier. Now I'm having to climb back over this ridge. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be my favorite thing to do, but um, the rocks are actually easier to get over and versus, you know, one down tree after another because it's all burned out. So this is definitely turning out to be easier. I wouldn't say more fun, but I got a nice breeze coming up uh, from the west. Clear day. And um, yeah, it's, it's working. It's all working for me. So let's get back to work. This is the hardest part of the whole damn thing. There's just no other way. Maybe off to the right here where there's more volcanic rock up and around. Some of that, I guess. I'm gonna try that. All right, just, just checking in. Uh, that was uh, really hard, but easier. So I decided, yep, go west again. Um, and uh, it definitely worked out a little bit better. Less, uh, less fallen logs and stuff. Although it's still a lot, but easier to get through. So just about at the uh, <clears throat> lookout, which is burned out. Um, and I'm on the trail, I'm basically an old road. It used to come up here. Um, I'm sure they dropped this. That gear off up there with the helicopter because there's a big container up there for four service VHF gear. But uh, UHF, VHF. But anyway, so the good part is if you do do this hike, um, you'll know to go to the west side. Nobody likes going through a uh, lava field, but um, it's easier than navigating all of this fallen pine um, with a pack. So I probably got 30 pounds today. I brought my chair. I don't know why, because I didn't set it up. When I hike up here, there's always a place to sit down on a log or something, typically. Um, unlike, you know, some of the desert activations I do around San Diego. So, um, say on the west side, when you come back, the lookout towers are a really good reference. Um, you get to that and you can find the trail back down. Although now you have to contend with all of this stuff. But uh, we're on our way back. Probably have about three miles to go from here. <sighs> and it is uh, partly cloudy and that's about it. So let's get cracking. Don't know if you can hear that, but wind whistling through the trees, it just picked up. <laughs> uh, 
falling through the toughest part. There's still a bunch of falling stuff to go, but um, it's uh, that was a real bugger. I've uh, pulled the layer off with some sunscreen on my neck. Hopefully, I didn't burn it. Um, but anyway, this has been a, gotta go up to get home. Okay, well that wraps up Escadilla. I headed over to um, uh, South Mountain, which is a drive up. So, uh, had a bunch of water, refreshed, and uh, so let's get on the video. That's my operating position over there. CQ, 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 this is November 1, Charlie Lima Charlie calling CQ, CQ, CQ for summits on the air, any station, anywhere. Whiskey Uniform 7 Hotel QSL. Whiskey Uniform 7 Hotel, Whiskey Uniform 7 Hotel, Whiskey Uniform 7 Hotel November 1, Charlie Lima Charlie. Yep, Roger, Roger, thank you, man. You're my first contact up here. Alrighty, this is November 1, Charlie Lima Charlie calling CQ, CQ, CQ for summits on the air, any station, anywhere. Whiskey Zero Mike November Alpha. Whiskey Zero Mike November Alpha got you uh, about a, a five, uh, five, seven, five, seven, over. Alrighty, thanks Gary. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one. Whiskey November 4, uh, is that Alpha Tango? Roger, roger. All righty, got you at about a 5.8 here, 5.8, over. Uh, QSL 5.8, you're 555 in Alabama, over. Yeah, QSL, QSL, thanks for the 5.5. Uh, okay, 73, good luck. All righty, man, 73, November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie, summit's on the air. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small we can sit